Hello everyone and welcome back. In our previous video, we looked into the pharmacokinetic principles which included absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion of drug. In this video, we'll learn about pharmacodynamics which basically is the study of how the drug affects the body. Pharmacodynamics involves several key concepts like drug receptor interaction, mechanism of action, structural activity relationship, dose response curve and drug interaction. We will look into each one of them as we go on with this video. Alright, let's start with the drug receptor interaction first. When we take a drug, it doesn't just float around aimlessly. It is looking for specific targets in our body called receptors. These receptors are like locks on the surface or inside our cells. The drug acts like a key and when it finds the right lock, it binds to it causing a response in our body. So drug receptor interaction is the process by which a drug binds to the receptor leading to a variety of cellular responses. Now the binding of drug to its receptor can either activate or inhibit the receptors. Depending on this response, the drug can be classified as either full agonist, partial agonist, antagonist, inverse agonist and agonist antagonist. Full agonist is a drug that binds to a receptor and activates it to produce the maximum biological response that the receptor is capable of. We can think of it as a key that perfectly fits into a lock, turning it completely and fully opening the lock. When we administer morphine for example, it acts as a full agonist at the mu opioid receptor in the central nervous system. This interaction leads to significant analgesia or pain relief. The reason morphine is so effective is because it fully activates these receptors mimicking the action of natural pain relieving peptides in our body but to a much greater extent. For now, let's not try to dissect the whole process of how morphine works as shown in the diagram. Unlike full agonist, partial agonist produces a less than maximal response even if they occupy all the available receptors. Imagine it as a key that fits into the lock but only partially turns it so that the lock opens a little. A classic example in anesthesia is buprenorphine. It binds to the same mu opioid receptors as morphine but then does not activate them to the same extent. This means Bupironorphine provides pain relief but there is a ceiling to its effect. Beyond certain dose, increasing the dose does not increase the effect of such drugs. This property can be beneficial in reducing the side effects such as respiratory depression making partial agonist useful in certain clinical situations. Next we have antagonists. These drugs bind to the receptors but do not activate them. Instead, they block the receptor and prevent other agonists like endogenous hormones or neurotransmitters from binding and exerting their effects. Using the analogy of lock and the key, we can think of receptor as a lock and antagonist as a key that plugs into the lock. By occupying the lock, the antagonist prevents the true key, the agonist, from accessing and turning the lock. Naloxone is the prime example of such drug. It binds to mu opioid receptors without activating them, effectively displacing opioids like morphine and reversing their effects. This makes naloxone a lifesaver in case of opioid overdose. Inverse agonists are a bit more complex. While an agonist activates a receptor to produce a response and antagonist blocks the receptor, inverse agonist binds to the same receptor but produces opposite effect of an agonist. Think of it like this. If turning the key one way unlocks the lock as in agonist, then an inverse agonist turns the key in the opposite way 
jamming or rendering the lock unusable. Propanol is an example of inverse agonist which acts at beta receptors. It not only blocks the effects of adrenaline but also reduces the basal or the intrinsic activity of these receptors. It does however sound like antagonist too but the main difference between the inverse agonist and an antagonist is that the inverse agonist reduces the receptor activity while the antagonist blocks the receptor from being bound by endogenic hormones or peptides. Agonist antagonists have dual actions. They act as agonists at one type of receptor and antagonists at another. Nalbufin is an example relevant to anesthesia. It acts as an agonist at kappa opioid receptors, providing pain relief while simultaneously acting as antagonist at mu opioid receptors. This mixed action is advantageous because it can offer analgesia while reducing the risk of some of the adverse effects associated with mu opioid agonists such as respiratory depression. But at the same time, the analgesic effect won't be strong too. Before summarizing, we should note that the receptors exhibit certain level of activity without any external substance binding to it. This is called constitutive, intrinsic or baseline activity of a receptor. The baseline activity is the focal point for classifying the drug's activity when it binds to the receptor. As you can see, the full agonist activates the receptor to its maximum potential producing the maximum possible response above the baseline activity. Such drugs are said to have efficacy of plus one, meaning that the drug can fully activate the receptor. Now, if you look at the antagonist, the receptor response does not change from its baseline. These drugs bind to the receptor and blocks the other agonists from binding but does not alter the receptor's constitutive or baseline activity. They have the efficacy of zero. Then there is inverse agonists with the efficacy of negative one. Such drugs bind to the receptor and decreases its activity below the baseline producing the opposite effect of full agonists. In addition to plus 1, 0 and negative 1, drugs can have varying levels of efficacy falling anywhere on the spectrum between full agonists and inverse agonist. Partial agonists for example have an efficacy lying between 0 and plus 1. They activate the receptor but not to its full potential. Similarly on the opposite spectrum we can also have partial inverse agonists with the efficacy lying between 0 and negative 1. 